The President, please be seated. The court is now in session. During today's session and tomorrow's session as scheduled, we continue hearing the testimonies of witness Bian Kien, questions to be put by the prosecution. The prosecution has already put uh, some questions. However, there are a lot of time still remains and they will proceed uh, with uh, putting for the questions and other parties will be given the floor to put questions to the witness, including the judges of the bench. Mrs. Saikolvati, could you report on the attendance of the parties to the proceedings today to the chamber? Mrs. Saikolvati, Mr. President, all parties to the proceedings are present, and Mr. Bin Kien is also present and awaiting call from the chamber to appear before this chamber. The President, uh, thank you. Court officer is now instructed uh, to bring in witness Bin Kien to the court. The President. Good morning, Mr. Bian Kien. We can see that uh, you look fresh this morning and that uh, we hope uh, you will remain healthy enough uh, to be able to give testimonies and so that uh, we can conclude the testimony of yours. Before we proceed to the prosecution, we would like uh, to in the International Co-Prosecutor that uh, the hearing on the 3rd of May 2012 was uh, conducted uh, for one hour and uh, 20 minutes. And the Chamber had already decided uh, regarding the request by the prosecution concerning the times uh, allocated to put uh, to the witness. The prosecution had used rather one hour and a half already and that uh, you can proceed uh, until the morning adjournment uh, for putting questions to the witness. You may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Um, and, and just uh, before we start, um, we'll resume the examination of the witness, a small housekeeping matter. Um, I'd like to introduce to the Chamber and, and Council my colleague Keith Rayner, who has recently joined us um, and will be appearing before Your Honours um, in, in future hearings. He's seated right next to me. Good morning, Mr. P. and Kean, 
and thank you for coming back to testify uh, and assist the Chamber in ascertaining the truth. What I would like to do, uh, because we've had a two-week break since your last testimony, is to briefly revisit some of the issues we discussed and didn't fully uh, explore uh, and see if we can complete them in the short time remaining. You said to us that at the time of Khoi Tuan's arrest, uh, you uh, were living and working at Trang Chamre. Is that correct? Response. Yes, it is. However, I did not uh, work. I was there to uh, take good care of the house, cl um, clearing grasses, for example. And I think you also said to us that in, in that period you um, took care of Koi Tun or, or provided food for him. Um, I just want to make sure that I, I have that correct. Response, yes, it is correct. Thank you. Um, just so that we, we understand, um, you've said to us that Cheng Chamre was a location where Koi Tun worked. Koi Kun worked. Um, could you uh, describe for the court what Chang Chamre looked like? Was it a small place? Was it a large house? Could you describe the site itself for the chamber? Um, response. Chirang Chamre was not a location where we worked uh, substantially. It was a location where we would uh, stay uh, temporarily. And, and just to, um, to clarify, um, was it a large place or a small place? And how many people worked there or lived there? Response. Uh, the, the location at Chang Chamres was uh, small. It uh, the place accommodated uh, about 20 to 30 people. And were, were those people, were all of those people um, working uh, for Kui Tun or were there people from other um, offices there. Response. All of them were with Koi Kun, no outsiders. Thank you. You also said to us that uh, after Koi Kun, alias Tuch, was arrested. Um, you stayed at Chang Chamre for a period of two months. Um, could you describe what, what happened at Chang Chamre after his disappearance? Response. I did not uh, notice any change to the situation. It was normal. And how did you uh, find out that uh, Tuch had been arrested?
I learned uh, about this through friends who told me. That's how I knew uh, this. Uh, were these friends people that lived with you at Cheng Chamre? Response, yes, they were. You also testified on the 2nd of May that uh, you uh, knew and, and for a period of time worked for Khoi Kun's wife, Madam Yun, who was chief of Sector 32. Uh, was she at Chang Chamre at this time? Response. No, she wasn't. Uh, and where was she? <laughs> Response. I don't know where she was. Did you ever see her or talk to her after the disappearance of Kui Kun? Response. No, I did not uh, see her since the disappearance of Koi Kun. Now, you heard that Koi Kun had been arrested and you testified that this was ordered by Ankar. Did you hear what happened to his wife? Or did you ever learn in any way what happened to her? Response. I did not uh, receive any information after the disappear uh, after Koi Kun was arrested. I did not know what happened to any of them. Thank you. I'll, I'll just note for the record, Your Honours, while we're discussing this particular individual, um, she is uh, listed on the. S21 revised prisoner list, which is document E3-342, uh, entry number 12149, and that is at ERN 00330124. That ERN is common uh, to all the languages. Mr. Pianquian, you said to us on the 3rd of May that uh, you, that Ankar had broadcast through radio programs that Khoi Tun was an internal traitor and that he um, was affiliated with the CIA. Um, when you heard that, um, how, how did you feel? Response. I was concerned. First, because I, I missed him because we had been living together. And secondly, at that time, I did not know where I would stay because I used to stay with him, and now um, he he had problem, and I did not I did not know where I should go. You also said to us um, on the third of May that you had heard that after Kui Kun was arrested, 
that his subordinates also were to be arrested. Um, were you afraid that, that you might uh, also be arrested at this time? Response, yes, indeed I was. I felt very afraid like other people because we did not know where the person arrested could have been sent to. Thank you. Now, I'll just move on to a a slightly different um, issue. You also said to us on the 2nd of May that when you joined the revolution, you were asked to write a personal biography. Were you, did you ever write uh, other biographies after this time? Or was this the only biography you wrote? Response. I don't remember writing any other biographies, but that was the only chance or time I wrote that personal biography. Do you know if any of your um, fellow staff um, in Phnom Penh were asked to write biographies or, or wrote biographies at this time? Response. No, I didn't. I did not see or note to uh, any other people writing any such biography because it was their business. I just don't know. But you did say to us that you uh, took part um, or were required to take part in regular criticism and self-criticism sessions. Um, what was discussed in these sessions? Response. During the criticism and self-criticism sessions conducted every evening, people would be checked on their performance of their daily work. For example, if there was no shortcoming, if no mistake uh, was committed, it was a kind of qualification that people uh, was, uh, were free from being criticized. However, if people fail to achieve the day-to-day -day work performance, such sessions were very important so that people could be criticized, reminded of how to perform their work better. And if one continued to make mistakes, were there any punishments for such mistakes? Response. To the best of my recollection, this never happened to me or to others. No punishment was ever made. If uh, we made mistakes, uh, we would be recorrected. 
educated time and again. <coughs> Now, Mr. Pian Kian, you, you were in Phnom Penh for a part of the period from 75 to 79. Uh, could you describe to us what the city was like in this period? Um, were there lots of people living in the city and were people able to move around freely? Response. During this period of time, I did not take any notice of the situation, but I felt that it was normal. I did not see people move around after the liberation but uh, I did see them moving around uh, immediately after Phnom Penh was liberated. When, when you say immediately after the people were liberated, um, are these the people, the large groups that you saw uh, being evacuated on the 17th of April? Are these the people you are describing? response. On the 17th of April 1975, I saw these people when I was traveling from Udong to Phnom Penh. I saw them walking on the road and when I approached Phnom Penh, I noted that the city was very quiet already. And you said to us you, you felt later that the situation was normal. Um, as, as far as you could tell, did those people who left, who were evacuated on the 17th of April, um, did they return before the 7th of January 79? Response. I don't know whether these people returned or moved to live in other parts of the country. Now, living in, in Phnom Penh at the time, were you personally able to move around um, to any part of the city as you, as you wished? Response. Back then, I could not move freely unless there was an assignment or designation by Pong that I attended a training or I went to certain places to get uh, certain stuff. For example, I may be uh, instructed to uh, transport uh, rice uh, or vegetables from Prey Pnu or Chirang Chumres uh, to K1 offices. And what about your colleagues, other people who worked um, K1, K3 and other offices, people like yourself, were they able to move around freely or did they also need a permission?
that I did not know about them. But uh, that's what happened to me. I could describe what uh, had happened to me. Very well, Mr. P. and Kin. Um, at this time, 75 to 79, in Phnom Penh, did you uh, ever notice any of your colleagues or anyone being removed or disappearing from the places they were working? Back then, I knew the matters relating to Pang and Koi Thun, but as for others, I did not know. I just want to make sure I understand your answer. Um, are you telling us that apart from knowing about Koi Tun and Pang disappearing, that you never heard or noticed that anyone else disappeared during that entire period? I did not know or I did not notice uh, any other people who had disappeared. I, I only knew about them. Thank you, Mr. P. Kin. Now, when we um, stopped on the 3rd of May, um, we were discussing your uh, prior interviews before um, coming here to the court to testify. And you said to us, if I recall correctly, that you had had two interviews. Is that correct? Yes, I have had uh, two interviews. And can you tell us who those <coughs> interviews were with? I do not recollect. Now, we showed you um, two weeks ago um, a, a document which is a record of your interview with um, the investigators uh, from this court, um, and that document is dated the 27th of August 2009. Do you recall having that interview? In 2009, uh, to my recollection, yes, there was an interview. And do you recall who your other interview was with, or do you not recall that right now? I'm 
trơn tật đăng thạc nhắm ban cho I cannot recall the people whom I had interviewed with, uh, but I do recall that I had had two interviews. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, at this time, uh, I'd like to show uh, to the witness document E187.1. Um, this is the document which Your Honours admitted um, at, at our hearing, I believe, on the 2nd or 3rd of May. Um, it's E187.1. It is a, um, a summary of an interview. The President, is, you may proceed. Court officer is instructed to take the document uh, from the international co-prosecutor and present it to the witness. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Pian Kian, have you been given a copy of this document uh, by court staff before coming here to testify today? Yes, I, I was given this uh, document, but I, I cannot recall it uh, due to my uh, forgetfulness. We understand, Mr. Ping and Kian. Um, this document uh, appears to be a summary of a conversation um, that you had on the 25th of July 2005 um, and it was a conversation about the issues that we've been discussing these last few days. Um, does that refresh your memory? Do you recall whether the people you met uh, spoke to you in, in July 2005 or around that time? I can only re recall that my first interview well in that interview there was there were two Cambodians uh, one female and two uh, or three men and there were also two other foreigners, one male and one female. And in my second interview, I could not recall uh, the names of the interviewers. They were all male Cambodian uh, people and one foreigner. Very well. Um, perhaps to uh, focus in a bit um, and see how much of this you uh, may be able to recall. Um, I'm going to ask uh, my case manager uh, to show the Khmer page ERN 00801770. If we could show that on the screen. Um, Mr. P and Kim, if you're looking at um, at a hard copy, that should be on the third page, the third page, which has 
the number 00801770 in the top left hand corner. Um, I'm, I'm just going to read to you two brief passages um, from this document and ask if you can uh, recall uh, saying that to these people that you met. Quote, I was not involved with the CIA, KGB, etc., or any coup plot, so I don't know why I was named as a traitor. But I lived in fear because everybody kept disappearing. And even though I did not know whether they were alive or dead, there were whisperings that people who disappeared were dead. And then the next brief passage, very much related. We had some freedom to move around and we could see that people were disappearing. The word used was removed, duck, but everyone increasingly assumed that some were arrested. Being removed sometimes really meant being transferred, but at other times it meant arrest. Mr. P. M. Kian, do you recall uh, making this statement? Is this a correct summary of what you said to these people? Yes, uh, that was my understanding. The situation back then was like what I described in my interview. Thank you very much. Um, We may um, move on to, um, or rather, I'll just stay on this topic very, very briefly. Um, you, you have testified, of course, that um, at one stage, uh, Pung himself disappeared. Do you uh, recall um, how you found out that he had disappeared or was arrested? Then I did not uh, see him being arrested, but uh, I stayed in his place on a daily basis at uh, K1. We actually resided there together, but uh, a few days uh, later, he mysteriously disappeared, and I kept suspecting what had happened to him because I could not uh, get any information about his disappearance, but a few days later, I learned uh, from some of my friends that Pong had been arrested. Then I did not bother to dwell on the matters. Mr. Pian Kian, we might just return briefly to that uh, 2005 record of interview. Um, if we could show uh, that on the screen, Your Honours. This is uh, Khmer ERN 00801769. Uh, it should be the second page in the Khmer language. Um, and I just realized I haven't been giving uh, French and English ERNs. The English ERN is triple zero eight nine seven oh one and the French ERN for this passage is double zero six four four five seven five. So Mr. P and Kian returning to this document um, as I said on 
the second page in the Khmer language. Um, if we could show that on the screen, Your Honours. Yes, you may proceed. Uh, Mr. P. N. Kian, just to see if this refreshes your memory at all. Um, there is a paragraph which starts with the words Pang was replaced by Lin, who died on the border of heart disease. Uh, what I'm interested in is, is a couple sentences um, further from that, uh, from that um, sentence. Uh, there's a passage which states, it was said that Pong had committed treason. We heard that Pong had committed treason, although there was no official announcement. And to complete that, quote, I was never sure whether Koi Tun was alive or dead, nor was I sure about what had happened to Pong. Mr. Pian Kian, is this a correct uh, summary of what you said, um, namely that you heard that Pong had committed treason, uh, but you didn't know that for a fact? That was correct. The, but the name here should be Koi, Koi Kun rather than Koi Tun here. That is according to my recollection. Uh, thank you for, for uh, pointing that out. Um, I might just uh, brief here, uh, pause here very briefly, Your Honours, and, and for the record, because there's been uh, use of uh, different names, uh, Koi Tuong and Koi Kuan, both uh, having the alias Tuch. I'll just briefly note for the record, um, document IS 5.39 um, sheds some light on this issue. Um, I don't want to gain, go into great detail in front of the witness other than to indicate that at Khmer ERN 00005994 and the pages following, um, you will find uh, signatures uh, and dates um, with the name Kuon being used. These documents are from February and March 1977. Uh, to give one example of a page which is available in all three languages, uh, Khmer ERN Double zero, double zero, six zero, six six um, is such a page signed by Kuan. It is available in both English and French. The English ERN is double zero, seven six nine eight three zero, and the French ERN is double zero, seven six six seven nine four. Um, and, and without further ado, I, I will continue. I just wanted to note for the record that this document. Um, does shed light on, on uh, the use of these two names. Mr. P. N. Kian, returning to uh, Pong's arrest and disappearance, you said to us um, that Pong was an assistant uh, to the senior leaders. When he disappeared, um, was it widely known among uh, people working with you? Did people uh, know and notice that he had disappeared? Back then, uh, in general, uh, they knew that he had disappeared, people who were living in K1 and K3. You said you were afraid following uh, Koi Kun's uh, disappearance. Uh, were you 
afraid or how did you feel following Pong's disappearance? Frankly speaking, when Koi uh, Thuan uh, disappeared, uh, I was living in fear. And then when uh, again Bong disappeared, I was even uh, more terrified. But I did not really understand the situation very well. As far as you know, did anyone ever come uh, to investigate what happened with Pong? Did anyone ever try to find out where he went in K1 or elsewhere, as far as you know? Since his disappearance, there was no investigation whatsoever was conducted. Moving on to another topic, uh, Mr. P and Kian. Um, we discussed on the 3rd of May um, some of the meetings that you saw uh, take place at K3. And just to refresh everyone's memory, you said to us in, re in relation to K3 um, that sometimes during the sessions only this group of people would be seen, that is the, the senior leaders. Because the sessions were not conducted for the popular masses, but they were meant to be for this group of people. Um, and that group was, uh, you said, Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, Q San Pan, Yang Siri, and sometimes Son Sen. Do you recall how often uh, you saw those meetings took place, or how often you knew that they took place? To my recollection, back then the meeting of this kind took place around twice or three times a month. Thank you. Um, You were, um, you said to us you were catering, you were in charge of catering um, uh, during some of these meetings. Um, did you ever enter the room where the leaders met? Back then, I did not enter the meeting venue because I was in charge of uh, catering, but I stay mainly in the kitchen because I had to uh, ensure that the uh, food uh, was being properly prepared, and I uh, oversee the preparation of foods in the kitchens, basically. Um, did you hear from anyone or, or um, did you know in any other way what um, the purpose of those meetings was?
as for the purpose or substance of the meetings of the leaders, I did not know what uh, it was all about. Very well. Um, you, you said to us that some of these meetings uh, were only for this small group of people. Um, were there other types of meetings, larger meetings perhaps, or uh, meetings with other people that you saw at K3? I did not see the outsiders beside the few leaders. Did you ever hear uh, about meetings with other people at K3 other than the leaders? No, I never saw outsiders. I only saw three or four leaders. Very well. We have limited time, so we'll move on. Um, I asked you last time if you recalled whether uh, Q Sampan ever attended meetings with people uh, working in K offices. Um, and I, if I recall correctly, you said that you didn't see him um, having such meetings. Uh, did you ever see Q Sampan attend any meetings other than the meetings with the senior leaders that you described? Response. No, I didn't. I didn't uh, see him other than at K3 office. I had no. no I have no knowledge of this. Um, Your Honours, I'd like to return to um, the uh, document number E eight one eight seven dot one which was that uh, 2005 interview summary to see if we can uh, assist the witness in uh, refreshing his memory. E187.1, uh, Mr. President, if we could have that document on the screen. The President, you may proceed. Court officer is now instructed uh, to pinpoint to the portion the prosecutor would wish uh, to ask witness about to, uh, to ensure that uh, the, uh, the proceedings are more expeditious. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, court officer, you uh, will find this next passage on the, uh, it should be the third page uh, of the Khmer um, version, uh, and in the top left-hand corner, it should be ERN Double zero eight zero one seven seven zero. It's the same page we were looking at earlier. Um, if we could, uh, if the AV unit could display that um, document on the screen, uh, so it can be seen by all the parties. Thank you, um, Mr. P and Kian. I'll just read a brief passage from this that relates to the issue we just discussed. Um, and I quote, it was Pong who arranged meetings, but Ham, in brackets Q San Pan, who chaired things politically, but under Pol, who was in charge of political meetings together with Nguyen. And the next sentence states, Ham, that is Q San Pan, chaired the meetings of party branches of K officers. Ham, Q San Pan, was superior to Pong. Do you recall 
making that statement, Mr. Pinkian. Response. Yes, I do. And is it correct, um, as the statement indicates, that it was Q Sampan who chaired things politically um, in meetings with K officers and that Pong arranged those meetings? Is that the truth? Response, yes, it is through my observation back then. Council, the President, Council for Kirsten Pond, you may proceed. Council, Kung Sum On. We feel that uh, the testimony of the witness is not very clear whether he said uh, such statement was made uh, relevant to the time back then or in the interview. The President, uh, co-prosecutor may continue putting questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Pian Kian, just continuing uh, with this uh, theme, do you recall um, a place called Borikila. Do you know where that is? Response. I had heard of Borikila, but uh, I don't recollect where it could have been located. Thank you. Um, do you recall what Borikila was used for? What this location was? Response. I have heard about the name of Borikela, but I don't know what it is for. Do you recall whether any of the accused, that is Nunchia, Ki Sampong, or Ying Seri, um, provided political education for cadre? in the period 75 to 79. Response. I don't know about this. Uh, very well. Um, Mr. President, with your permission, we will return uh, to E187.1 and um, a, a brief passage uh, in this document, uh, which is at Khmer ERN, same page as last, uh, the one we discussed earlier, 00801770. The President, you may proceed. Court officer is now instructed to assist uh, the witness concerning the portion of the document uh, the court prosecutor is now wishing to put questions to the witness. 
I'm grateful, Mr. President. Uh, for the record, the relevant ERNs uh, in French. This is at 00644576. In English, it is 00089701. Uh, if the court officer could uh, show this, this page uh, to the witness. This, this passage is at the bottom of this page. If the AV unit could assist us with um, having this document shown on the screen. Um, I am interested in one brief passage here, Mr. P. and Kian. Um, and quote, Nun Chia and Hen in brackets Q Sampong, gave high-level political education at Borikila for Phnom Penh Ministry and grassroots cadre. Pong organized these meetings with Kami providing security. Those attending these meetings slept in villas around Borikila and ate inside the perimeter. Uh, is, this, is this a correct summary of, your, uh, of what you said uh, to these people in 2005, Mr. P. and Kim. Response. Yes, it is. Could you assist us with um, this term, high level? political education. What does that refer to, Mr. P. and Kian? Respond. My observation is that normally surrounding K1, K2, and K3, Bang was the one who regularly in charge. But at Burikila, on one occasion, I saw some senior people or leaders coming to start the session. Those people include Uncle Ham and Bang also was there. So I can conclude that uh, at that time the meeting must have been at a higher level than the normal meeting Bang would chair. And uh, the meeting could have been about how to construct the country, how to establish cooperatives, and how people could be educated not to be overjoyed, and others. And the content of the meeting was more important than the normal p uh, meeting to ordinary peasants or workers. Because we were reminded about the political line, about how to construct a country, how to make the country prosper and how to ensure that the people had enough to eat. And I read about this in the document. Could you help us um, understand who were the people that attended these meetings uh, who received the education? Were they lower-level cadre? Were they senior people? Or? 
or otherwise. Response. At that time, I don't know the people who were there, but I guess at least uh, people at sector levels or at least uh, people who would be working surrounding K offices uh, attending the meeting, although I don't know from which ministries they could have been from, but they were senior. Did you yourself ever attend these meetings or did you just see them take place? Response. I was invited to attend the meeting as well. And the content of the meeting, as I indicated earlier already, it was all about that. And who did you see, uh, hear speaking uh, at, at that meeting that you attended? Response. I don't recollect. To, to, I don't remember the person who was speaking, but I recall the names of those people, in particular the leaders I already named. And, and do I understand correctly that um, it was that meeting which you attended that you saw? Uh, Kusan Pong and Pong, and, and please add if there were any others. Is that the meaning that you've been describing? Response. Yes, it is correct. Do you recall if that particular meeting was attended by Nguyen Chia or Ying Siri? Response. So far as I recollect, uh, Om Ying Seri was not uh, present, but uh, Om Nguyen Chia was there. You said to us that um, some of the things that were taught um, were about the political line. Um, could you be a little bit more specific? Tell us what that political line was. Response. After the 17th of April 1975, when Phnom Penh was liberated, the first political line was to rebuild the country. Secondly, to defend it, uh, to defend the country. Thirdly, to establish the cooperatives and create the collective regime. And
encourage the people and the popular masses to build canals and dams to ensure that the country can prosper quickly. I cannot uh, go deep inside the matter concerning the national defense, but uh, we were educated uh, to protect our country from any outside uh, intrusion. And also to, uh, we were asked uh, to uh, ensure that the American imperialists uh, could never return. So these are the two main things about the national defense side of uh, the meeting on the political line. Thank you very much, Ben Kean, for, for these comprehensive answers. Um, just to see if we can explore that last point um, a little bit further. Uh, you also said to us on the 3rd of May that the, in, in some of the meetings you attended, um, you were taught about enemies who were affiliated with the American CIA and who had infiltrated the party, as well as those who were KGB agents um, and the Vietnamese or the Yuan. As far as you recall, um, were, were all of these groups uh, groups against whom you were taught to defend the country? Response. These two groups are the same group. Thank you. Um, and were you told about um, where these enemies were and how you might defend the country against them? Response. The most important thing, first, we were asked to stop the Vietnamese from, in, uh, from invade the country and uh, to stop the American imperialists from returning to the country. So these are the two main points concerning the national defense. Given that you had told us that some of these people infiltrated the party, um, was there any discussion about um, how they might be discovered, what might be done in respect of those that, that infiltrated the party? response. Normally, people were reminded to watch over people who violated the political line. Anyone who abused the line could have been viewed as someone who did things against the party. And I don't know any other things other than this. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. P. And Kian. I will briefly move on in the time remaining to um, another topic and see if we can deal with it quickly. Um, you said to us that you um, went or was sent to Sven Nias after Pong's disappearance. Um, do you recall when this happened and who sent you to Svenius? Uh, no, 
Filipino yung response. Before the Vietnamese came into Phnom Penh, it was about three months before that uh, I was sent to Swai Mir, a small cooperative where I would be tempered. The cooperative was meant for tempering people, refreshing people, and I did not know what I did wrong. I knew that I was with Koi Kun, and I was afraid, and that's all. And who, um, could you just recall for us who it was that sent you to uh, Sven Mies? response it was Yom who sent me there I did not know where or from whom Yon could have received instruction but he was the chief of the office at uh, Prague Pra. Thank you. Um, and who did you go, did, were you sent there alone or with anyone else? Response. My family and I uh, were sent alone. No other people uh, were sent along with us. When you say your family, um, who was that? Response. Family here refer to my wife, indeed, no other people. Thank you. Um, and what did you do at Svein Mears? Did you have any uh, position or responsibilities there. Response. So far as I remember, when I was there at the beginning, I was. Uh, fishing, looking for food, and later on I was tasked with uh, planting or, or growing vegetables and fixing the looms at uh, Swai Mir before I was sent back to Phnom Penh. Um, I do realize we have limited time, Mr. President. I, I, I think it's fair that I clarify some Inconsistence, potential inconsistencies um, with respect to this matter. If, if I could be granted leave for an, an extra 10 minutes or so, um, I'd like to show the witness that um, interview again. Uh, I could do that now, or if your honours prefer, we could continue after the break, um, or I can just take the two minutes that are left. The President, uh, indeed, uh, you may proceed and uh, make sure that you um, have the floor before the break. Uh, after the adjournment, then we will proceed to the civil party councils. Thank you, Mr. President. If we could show that uh, document very briefly. Uh, again, it's E187.1. Um, this. Uh, is at Khmer ERN 1769. Um, it is English ERN 0089701 and French ERN 
575. Um, if we could show that document to the witness, Your Honours. The President, you may proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, if we could have that on the screen, um, AV unit. Uh, and, and given that time is limited, I'll, I will start reading. Um, Mr. P. and Kian, on the page that you're shown, um, the summary states, quote, I was sent by Lin to take charge of Svei Mies Pagoda after Pong was arrested. At the end of 1978, I was in charge of first of what, what, what Svei Mies and then workers at Pol 1, which was then under Ra, Ying Sari's youngest daughter. Is that, is that a correct summary of what happened, Mr. Pienkian? Response. This happened uh, after I had uh, already been at Swai Mie and uh, after I had uh, been sent to Phnom Penh to work as a worker and I worked in a group, a big group, about a hundred people. These workers who were managed by Lin, who later on passed down this responsibility to a person by the name Ra. And is, is this Ra the person that, you, that this document describes as Ying Seri's daughter, or his youngest daughter to be more precise? Response. I don't know whether Ra was the daughter of uh, him, but the, I was told that the person was called Ra, and no other specific uh, information was given to me other than this. Thank you. Um, so as a person who, uh, at one stage, was in charge of Svein Mies. What were your responsibilities? What did you do? Response. The term responsible of being in charge here refers to what I was saying is that I was in charge or responsible for being tempered. It, it has nothing to do with the role as a leader or as a person who was leading a group. I was being responsible for being tempered. So you were not in charge of anyone at Svein Mies, you, you were simply being tempered. Is that your evidence? Response, yes it is. Do you recall whether Svein Mies had um, any code uh, number allocated to it? Response. know nothing other than the what Swai Mir or Swai Mir Pagoda as the location was named because 
there was a pagoda there, and when I was there, I saw that pagoda, the old pagoda. You said um, you were sent there with your wife for tempering. Um, could you describe briefly the conditions of people who were held there? What did they do? Did they do any work? Um, how were they kept? No, there's no response. My spouse and I had been offered two meals per day, and we had to work as a jewel. For example, from the morning we would be working until lunch break, and at 1 o'clock we would start working again and would break at 4 p.m. And uh, like other people, we were treated equally. Um, if you were sent there to be tempered, um, what did this tempering um, entail? response. Tempering is nothing other than being offered uh, the daily activity to do. For example, people would be asked uh, to do labor work uh, to fix the looms and digging or carrying the earth and also other tax involved, as I indicated. And I will ask you one, uh, or possibly two final questions, Mr. Payan Kian. Uh, on, a, on a separate topic, I just want to make sure that we've um, exhausted your memory. Uh, you talk to us about your stay in Udong in early 1975 uh, with Khoi Kun. And you said that at this time you knew of Pol Pot, Son Sen, and Ya. This was on the 2nd of May. And you also said to us that, um, that there was a meeting or meetings of senior leaders to discuss the attack on Phnom Penh. Is there anything about those meetings that I have not asked you, Mr. P. N. Kian, that you can assist us with. What was discussed? What, if any, decisions were made? No, fair, no. Response. I only knew that there was a plan to attack to liberate Phnom Penh. I knew nothing other than this. And my final question, Mr. P. N. Kian, after you came to Phnom Penh, did you ever hear what happened to people uh, in the Lon Nol government, such as Lon Nol, Sirik Matak, or Long Borain? Response. I don't know what happened to them, but I knew I know that uh, Lonol fled to
to the United States and I have no knowledge of what happened to other people. Uh, thank you, Mr. P and Kian, uh, for coming and testifying. Uh, thank you, Your Honours, for the extra time. I'm very grateful, um, and that concludes our examination. The President, thank you. It is now appropriate time for the adjournment. We will adjourn for 20 minutes. The next session will be resumed at 11 o'clock. When we resume, lead co-lawyers for the civil parties will be offered the floor. And uh, the chamber allocates as uh, requested one hour and ten minutes uh, for the civil parties. Council for Incident, you may proceed. Council Angadam, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, due to my client uh, health reason, he has requested that he be permitted to uh, observe the proceeding from his holding cell for from now until the end of the day. The President of the Chamber has noted the request by Yung Sari through his counsel, requesting that uh, he be allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell for the whole day starting from now. And he has uh, stated that he couldn't uh, remain seated in the courtroom due to his health reason. The chamber therefore grants such a request. The request that has been made uh, through his counsel to waive his right to uh, be directly observing the proceeding in the courtroom, but instead be permitted to observe the proceedings from his holding cell for the whole day today. Councils for Mr. Ying Sari are instructed to produce the waiver signed or given some print uh, by Mr. Ying Sari. AV booth officials are now instructed to ensure that the video link is well connected to the holding cell and personal securities are now instructed to bring the accused uh, person to the holding cell so that he can observe the proceeding from there.